What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Observant Lineman. I am your Observant Lineman, Uche Waneri. And today I want to talk about CTE. Once again, we're going to get into this discussion. Um, if you haven't seen my other video on CTE, I did a video on Ohio State Lineman who just recently took his life. Uh, and in his final Facebook post, he stated that uh, he hashtagged uh, to, for players to get checked for CTE which led me to believe that he was dealing with issues related to CTE uh, that were uh, issues that he wasn't able to overcome. Now, that's just one story. Uh, here's another story uh, that I wanted to get into. This is uh, this was hitting ESPN News uh, at 7.03 a.m. Uh, it's an early morning news article, which means, you know, that clearly this was something that was happening in near real time. Um, but former Pro Bowl fullback Leron McClain, and I know who who Leron McClain is. You know, obviously this guy was one of he was probably one of the last true fullbacks in the NFL uh, that was you know by scheme involved in the offense in Baltimore. Uh, he's most well known for being the fullback in Baltimore. But he also played with the Chiefs and the Chargers in his seven-year NFL career. Uh, now, Leron is hurting right now, guys. He is in a dark place, a very dark place. And uh, I just want to bring attention to this because as a, a former player who also played uh, as many years, uh, I can understand exactly where Leron's coming from. Uh, as a former player, I can also... Uh, admit that I've been in that same spot that he's been in mentally and it is a very dark place it's a very serious place you know there's a lot of things going on with him right now in his head and a lot of those things have to do with the fact that he's suffering from uh, from symptoms of CTE now I'm going to go through this article this is going to be a bit of a long video so buckle up because there's a couple things that I want to point to in regards to the uh, situation with LeBron, as well as uh, you know, past players who have also dealt with the situation, who are in positions that aren't necessarily the glamour positions of the NFL. These aren't you know necessarily receivers, quarterbacks, you know, defensive backs. These are guys who are in the trenches, guys who are in that seven-man box, who we're seeing that uh, CTE affects uh, far more. Uh, rapidly, it appears, than, uh, you know, the players who were catching deep balls and quarterbacks who were dropping back in the pocket. Um, but, you know, I'm going to take my time with this. I really want to, you know, hammer down on some of the finer details in terms of, you know, how it affects players, you know, and why uh, the NFL needs to be held accountable because they're actually – being counterproductive in uh, the process of trying to help players uh, after their career is over. The NFL has routinely moved the goalpost on the billion dollar settlement that they themselves agreed to uh, in regards to the concussion issues that have been going on with past players in the NFL. So we're going to go through this article. I'm going to take my time with it. And, you know, please just bear with this and understand that this is a huge problem. This is a this is a big problem. I can't overstate that. This is a big problem with with athletes. And, and, and it's not just exclusively to football, but that's the world I come from. That's the world I understand more than any. So I'm going to go into this article and we're going to talk about uh, LeRon McClain. Um, so it says here. Uh, former Pro Bowl fullback Leron McClain complained of head issues related to football and asked the league for help in a series of tweets since Saturday. <clears throat> I've, I, have, I have to get my head checked. Playing football since high school. It takes too fucking much to do anything. My brain is fucking tired. He tweeted from at Leron underscore McClain 33. NFL, I need some help. Dark times, and it's showing. Fucking help me, please. They don't care. I had to get lawyers, man. 
And again, it just this it, it goes back over his career as a as a player in the NFL. Um, McLean was a fourth round pick of the Ravens in 2007, so we're actually the same year, same draft class, uh, out of Alabama. <clears throat> On Saturday, he also tweeted, "Need to tell my story of how my head is crazy and how football did it. Please, someone help me get this out. The NFL puts paperwork in our in our faces." And that's it. Yes, it's programs. Fuck all that. I need help. Now, I need a plan. Fuck, man. They don't fucking get it. And, I mean, he's not lying at all. He is not lying. This guy is telling the truth. This is how the NFL handles its players. Once they are no longer viable, profitable products of entertainment. Uh... LaRon mentioned paperwork. If you saw the mountains of paperwork that the NFL sends you, if you saw the ridiculously absurd uh, criteria that has to be met in order to get any benefits from the NFL after you retire, you would, you would shit yourself. It's literally almost as painful as the CTE, dealing with the NFL and post-career, uh, app uh, uh, applying for post-career benefits. It's just unbelievable how they do everything they can to try and make sure that they give you as little money as possible. I think there have been less than five players, and I'm not sure, I'm not going to say that this is a fact, I don't know exactly what the number is at this point, but the last I heard on t you know, watching you know guys go through these similar situations, the NFL has paid out less than a handful of people from that billion dollar settlement because they keep moving the goalposts. They keep changing what determines whether a player is truly suffering from CTE, what whether a player is truly as as damaged as they say they are. So the NFL has avoided paying out ninety percent plus of the settlement sum that they actually agreed to pay. They've appealed, they have altered how doctors can how doctors can can examine players to diagnose uh, the mental problems that guys are having post football and it's it's unbelievable. It is something that needs to thoroughly be investigated into. Speaking to the situation with Leron you know, it hurts me as a player because I've been there. You know, and this guy has put his this guy has put his his deep, dark secrets in, of what's going on with his brain. He's put it out there for the world to see. And players, for a player to do that, he's in a position where he doesn't see any other option. You know, he's dealing with losing himself and apologize for the emotions, but it's real. Like this is, this dude is, this dude is in a dark place and somebody needs to help him. The NFL needs to be responsible and do what the fuck they agreed to do to help players who are dealing with mental issues post football because of football. And you know, as I read through this, let's see here. It says McLean's complaints come after a federal judge overseeing the one billion dollar concussion settlement terminated three of four lawyers serving as class counsel in May. The order came just weeks after hearing after a hearing to air complaints about new rules that limit the doctors who can evaluate retired players for dementia and other brain injuries. Senior U.S. District Judge Anita Brody said she imposed the 150 miles from home rule to thwart doctors shopping and potential fraud uh, alleged by the NFL as the more than $1 billion settlement fund is dispersed. She named New York lawyer Christopher Seeger as the only attorney left who can handle issues on behalf of the 20,000 member class. Outgoing counsel 
Gene Locks told the Associated Press the order extinguishes any remaining hope that clients will be protected as they move through the contentious medical testing and award process. He told Brody at a hearing this month that there aren't enough qualified neurologists, neuropsychologists, and subspecialists taking part in the program to meet the close to home rule. So what does this mean? What does this mean? The NFL has severely crippled the ability of players to ca- to be able to get the uh, the award money that the NFL has agreed to pay. Unbelievable. They have cut the entire award process at the knees by saying that a hunt that nobody who is outside of 150 miles from the home of the player in question is allowed to in any way get involved in the process of them being awarded money. So basically the NFL knows that there's no way that players are going to be able to get the right kind of diagnosis based on dealing with the uh, the the specialists who are in the, the the immediate vicinity of where that player is located. Unless you're in a big city, unless you're in a metropolitan area that has you know numerous specialists, and even at that, there's only a few who 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 truly are involved in the the studying of CTE because the NFL has done everything they can to to to, to crush the CTE issue. And, sweep, and to sweep that under the rug. That's no, there's no doubt about that. I mean, it's evident. Now they're going into the courts and and through the legal process are cutting off this entire settlement at the knees. And it's it's a fucking shame. It's a it's a travesty. It's 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 bullshit, for lack of a better word. Um but you know, as this outgoing counsel who was who was terminated three of the four counsel for the players were terminated by the judge by the courts so who 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 is the court supposed to be working for in this situation are they looking out for the interests of the players who are the ones who were affected by the sport or are they looking out for the NFL's pockets the NFL's uh, reputation that NFL shield Looks like they're looking out for the shield. That's what it looks like to me. I mean, they call it, they're talking about they're trying to thwart doctor shopping and potential fraud. Well, you know, I'm a licensed healthcare insurance agent as well in my life. And one of the things I always tell clients or potential clients is that if you're a female and you have breast cancer, or you have a lump on your breast, any you know anything that could, could potentially put you in a situation where you may have breast cancer. Would you rather go to Grady Hospital here in Atlanta, or would you rather go to the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida? If you have the ability to, and have the coverage to go to the Mayo Clinic, wouldn't you rather go to the Mayo Clinic, world-renowned uh, a hospital that handles specifically, or deals specifically with cancer? Leading the field in research and study and advancements, isn't that what you would? Isn't that what you would be looking to do? They're sitting here talking about this rule has been implemented to thwart doctor shopping. What you're going to pay a doctor to say that you're that you're that you have CTE? I think we already know that you played football. I don't think you need a doctor to tell you you have CTE if you're dealing with mental issues as a player after your career is done. Asinine asinine and wholly unethical that a judge would allow something like this to happen would allow would would take away the ability for players to get what is what what is theirs to take for for their own health unbelievable unbelievable well i mean that is just beyond my realm of understanding that this could be something that the courts would allow to happen the NFL has routinely moved the goalpost. 
Because I went into the training camp with the Cowboys, they deemed that I was ineligible to, to be considered for the CTE settlement. Seven years of playing football. And because I was at a, at, a, at a training camp for a team, two months after their cutoff deadline, my seven years as a player is not adequate enough uh, credential to be allowed into the CTE program. So I don't even have this option. This option here that these players are dealing with, I don't even have that. And I played seven years. Six of those years as a starter, 100 starts. Played against uh, uh, the, the Baltimore Ravens numerous times. Clashed heads with guys like Ray Lewis. Clashed heads with guys like uh, uh, Haloti Nada. I'm not even eligible for this. And this guy is here struggling. This guy's over here pleading for help. This guy's put his life out there for everyone to see that he's struggling because he because that's all he has at this point. <sighs> Seeger, in a statement, vowed to continue to fight on behalf of former players and their families to ensure that they receive every benefit they deserve under the settlement. The player's lawsuit has alleged the NFL hid what it knew about the neuro neurological risk of playing after concussions. The fund is meant to last for 65 years. The awards in the first two years of payouts alone reached 500 million this month, while another 160 million awards have been approved but not yet paid. Okay, so this this gives a little bit more context to what I was saying earlier about not knowing exactly where they were at with paying out uh, to players who were who were needing this this money, and it looks like there has been money paid out. So I definitely, you know, will retract what I said before. There has been money that's been paid out, uh, but it is notoriously known that this has been a extremely prejudicial process. They are using extreme prejudice to determine whether a player is qualifies to be given, you know, part of the money, the money that they're owed in terms of the damage that has been dealt to them over their career as a football player. So there's 160 million out there that's been approved but not yet played, uh, not yet paid. I'm sorry. The plan offers retired players baseline testing and compensation of up to five million for the most serious illnesses linked to football concussions, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, amyotrophic lateral uh, sclerosis, and deaths involving chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE. Of the 872 awards paid to date, the average payout. Is just under five hundred and seventy-five thousand, according to the claims administrator's report this month. McLean argued that his position was also holding him back from getting help. Watch how fast they come to the aid. If I was some QB or anything, but I was a fucking fullback that did it all. He tweeted Saturday, NFL. I need help and I need the process to speed the fuck up. I'm about to crash out. And it's paperwork. I don't want to hear it. Fuck, man. I'm done. I'm out. You know, that's that's scary. Uh, and, you know, I agree with him in every word of that tweet. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we're, we were offensive linemen. He was a fullback. He was he was just a a, 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 a glorified offensive lineman. To a degree in the NFL, that that position has been relegated to that of somebody who's just a, a battering ram. Um, but he says here, watch how fast they come to the aid if it was some QB. Yeah, I guarantee you that somebody like Joe Montana didn't have any problem getting a piece of his settlement money. I guarantee you somebody like Troy Aikman. No disrespect to either one of these legends because they were legends, absolutely. No disrespect to them at all, but they are not dealing with the same kind of problem having their, their issues handled as somebody like LeRon is. Somebody like myself, you know what I mean? Like, it affects all of us who play, no doubt about it. And the NFL, if you're not a guy who is on ESPN, if you're not a guy who is on NFL Network, if you're not a guy who's on some sports broadcasting gig representing the Shield and adding to 
the dominance of the brand, they don't care. They don't. They don't. I have teammates who can't even get basic line of duty coverage. I went to Chicago and got a full body scan. If you saw the report on what my body, what's wrong with my body, the, the, the orthopedic issues that are wrong with my body, just from that standpoint, you would cringe. But I'm an offensive lineman. So it's the same as it was in the football culture. Oh, rub some dirt on it. You're okay. You're no lineman. You don't get hurt. And if you get hurt, nobody really cares because you're no lineman. Get another one up here. We'll just call up somebody else to come get your job real quick. They don't have a problem with that. You know, as an old lineman, we can't have, you know, a helmet issue and say, oh, I'm not, I want to play with my helmet that I've had for 10 years. Nobody wants to hear that. AB can do it, but if an old lineman does that, oh, you're going to be gone by the time you take your helmet off. By the time you take it off and, and start complaining, they already got you, they already done called up somebody from the practice squad. You gone. He's in pain. LeRon McClain is in pain. And, you know, to, to LeRon, brother, please hit me up. I hit you up on Twitter. I reached out. Anybody in his family, anybody who's, who's played with him, anybody who's met the guy, please check on this man. Check on this man and make sure he is, make sure that he is, that he can get some help. Make sure he can get some help because it's not, there's not anybody from the NFL side who, is, who has helped him out to this point. And he's going through the process and it's just a bunch of paperwork and then you're waiting and then it's more paperwork and then you're waiting. With mine, they just told me, no, because you went to camp, you're not even qualified and you played seven years. So, you know, you're on your own. You're not getting any bit of this concussion money. And, you know, hey, that's what it is and that's what it is. If I have options otherwise, then, I, then, I'll, then I'll, look, I'll look to those. But, this guy right here is is hurting. And, uh, you know, if they didn't care about Junior Seau, what makes me think that they're going to care about LeRon McClain? But uh, to continue through this, a number of high-profile cases have brought attention to the NFL head injuries and CTE. Hall of Fame linebacker Junior Seau died by a self-inflicted gunshot, as did former Browns great Dave Durison. Just to kind of bring this thing full circle, and I know that there is, uh, there I know that there are, are many people dealing with mental illness. Many people. I know this is not something that's exclusive to us as football players, <clears throat> but as football players, as public figures, I do believe that we can help make, uh, bring more awareness to this. And if this guy, Leron McClain, is not an example of a person in need, the dire straits that a person can be in mentally because of, you know, their involvement in a sport that has, you know, basically broken their mental state down because of the trauma that you received while playing that sport, then I don't know what is because, you know, he is taken to social media. He is taken to a world of strangers for help. And that says a lot when you... When, you, when your faith in the people you know and, and, the, and the institutions you know uh, is no longer there and you turn to a world of strangers, anybody, please, then you know it's, 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 it's a serious situation. So please share this video. You know, talk about this situation with Leron McClain. Talk about this situation in CTE with, with people that you know who love sports, who don't love sports who just are interested in understanding things that affect us. Like share this with as many people as you can just to get awareness out there from a player who's not, you know, who wasn't a star. You know, this guy was, was even a bigger star than I was. You know, I was just a guy, I was a vet. That's what I was. So while we're here as content creators on YouTube and as viewers on YouTube, let's try and spread this around uh, and, and get this out there for the public and for the everyday person to see that, you know, we are just regular human beings who deal with a lot of the same issues that everybody else does. And a lot of those issues have the compounded fact that we have to deal with, you know, a degenerative brain disease that the NFL to this day has done everything they can to limit its research, to 
to sweep that uh, image of the league under the rug. And clearly, from what, what him and other players like myself have dealt with, they're going to put as much red tape in front of you as they can before they give you a dollar, a single dollar. So please hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to The Observant Lineman. I'm going to uh, get some more videos together and, and try and present a more uh, digestible version of what I've spoken about in this video uh, regarding CTE. I'm going to try and get something like that up as soon as I can. And hopefully this weekend, uh, I'm going to try and do a Q&A uh, where I'll just, you know, hit that live stream and just answer questions that you guys may have for me about, you know, things like this or just things that have to do with my regular daily life and my football career. I really appreciate everybody who took the time to sit through this with me. And uh, yeah, just uh, stay tuned for the next Observant Lineman episode. Peace.